Hello, everyone, and welcome to the April 2017 monthly community meeting for the Transmart Foundation. My name is Rudy Potenjohn. I'm delighted to have you joining us today. Uh, today, we're going to have uh, an interesting program, I hope. Um, a lot of exciting things happening in the foundation. Uh, we will cover that. Uh, Keith Elliston, our CEO, will do a update on uh, what's what's happening. I'm sure some many of you, most of you have seen some of the news. Um, we'll talk a little bit about where we are with the Transmart platform, give you some updates there. Uh, and then Scott Wagers from uh, BioSci Consulting and Etrix uh, has put together a nice program uh, for us to, to look at some of the various resources available, uh, installing the Transmart platform and some of the, the things that are available for you all to uh, use and, and learn about the, the system. Uh, so uh, a little bit different kind of a focus today, and uh, hopefully this will be uh, an interesting program for everyone. I'd like to ask uh, Keith Elliston, our CEO, to uh, give us uh, an update on what's going on with the foundation. Keith? Great. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, I think uh, many of you may have seen the uh, the press release that we sent out uh, last week. Uh, we actually had some nice pickups of various things on the PR side. Uh, but in the press release, we announced the, the signing of our letter of intent to merge with the I2B2 Foundation. Uh, I've been working uh, diligently on this project for the past few months, and I'm happy to say that we are uh, very close to completing the project. Uh, I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, one of the things that I think is really exciting for us from the Transmark Foundation side is that uh, the I2B2 world, um, there are about 200 installs of the I2B2 platform representing about uh, at best estimates of I2B to between 250 and 300 million patients worth of data. Uh, one of their partners um, uh, there is, has done a, a survey of 29 of the institutions uh, and in 29 centers there are over 90 million patients. So there's a tremendous resource of patients and real world data that's in I2B2 with the shared data model with Transmark that we're really excited about. And uh, I think I can speak for, for the I2B2 Foundation as well, is that they're very excited about joining uh, the Transmark community, uh, particularly working with the, uh, the advanced analytics and, and translational capabilities of the platform uh, and the community that we have, have brought together. So I'm, I'm excited about the, the prospect of this. Um, we actually have the, the board meetings for both foundations next week uh, to consider and, and uh, finally approve uh, the merged foundations. Uh, we'll be talking quite a bit about um, what the, the, the Merge Foundation will do in the, in the next few weeks and giving people some great detail and update. But uh, one of the questions I've heard uh, often is, you know, what's going to happen to Transmart? What's going to happen to I2B2? Um, uh, Transmart and I2B2 as projects are going to continue to work as they have worked with the people that are working on them. Uh, the only difference is the overall uh, governance at the top level. Um, and in fact, one of the things that we are doing in the process of, of bringing the two foundations together is moving the governance of projects from, uh, from reporting to the management of the foundation to reporting directly to the board. So the chairs of each project, um, Sean Murphy for I2B2, uh, Rudy for Transmart, um, and, and Paula Viak for I2B2 Transmart, uh, will all report directly to the board of directors on a quarterly basis and then leverage the infrastructure of the foundation to manage their various projects under a common governance model, a co-governance model. So I, it's, a, it's an exciting time there. We're sort of, uh, I was at a, a dinner last night with uh, one of the Apache Software Foundation founders, and uh, he was talking about the early days of Apache Software Foundation. And uh, he, he uh, basically uh, talked and described where we are as, as very much like the early days of Apache Software Foundation. And in fact, uh, we're taking a lot of learning and lessons from what they've developed at ASF uh, and implementing them uh, here as well. So it's an exciting time, a lot of things happening. You'll hear a lot more in the, in the coming days. Uh, but I think if you have any questions on things, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to, to, to answer any questions that I can. Uh, we still have a lot of other things going on at the foundation. <clears throat> uh, Rudy will take you through uh, what's been going on with the 16.2. Uh, the key thing there is that the Oracle uh, release is in testing and uh, hopefully it'll be rolling out in the very near future. Uh, I think if you're, uh, if you're using uh, Oracle in your, in your installations, uh, this is really the thing that you're looking for. Um, I know there's a lot of work going on uh, with issues around uh, database migration scripts and things of that nature. Also, not to forget about the uh, Transmart Pro and the 17.1 project. 
Uh, one of the key things that's happened now is that the uh, release process for that version has started. Uh, Rudy has brought the PMC together. He can tell you some of the details uh, around that. Uh, one of the things that we're really excited about there is that uh, one of the integrations that's part of the 17.1 project is an integration with Arvados, which is a, a large-scale uh, platform for doing uh, big data workflows and you know, genome variant analysis and more. And we're pretty excited about the combination of, of Arvados and Transmart, and, and perhaps at some point in the future, uh, ITB2, Transmart, and Arvados. So I think there's a lot of exciting things happening in the, in the, in the works. And uh, it's going to be very interesting and exciting to see how these things develop uh, as, we, as we go forward. From an internal infrastructure perspective, we've been working you know, diligently uh, with our partners at the data, uh, Michigan Institute for Data Sciences and uh, uh, have our IBM server installed. This is a, an 82 processor, 3.5 terabyte RAM Power 8 system. Uh, it's a, a very high-end uh, data science platform. Uh, we'll be using that for various Transmart projects uh, as well as some data science projects. So uh, if you have a, a, an interest in using the platform uh, for running Transmart at IBM or for doing various data science things, you know, contact us uh, and, and we certainly can tie you into that and we look forward to some very interesting projects that can make use of that platform. Uh, so we're very interested in, in talking with people how that might work. Uh, lots of other things happening. I think, Rudy, are you going to take people through the marketing calendar and more? Uh, we have a number of upcoming events with uh, uh, BioIT World, with uh, the Precision Medicine meeting at Harvard, um, uh, and more. So I think there are a number of key events on the, on the marketing calendar that uh, should be of interest as well. But uh, exciting time for the foundation, lots of, lots of work here. Uh, but I think things are, are moving forward quite nicely, and I'm, I'm very pleased with where we are. Uh, I hope to... Uh, give you an update uh, next month about uh, where the foundation is going forward uh, from the combination with the I2B2 foundation and give you more details on the roadmap and plans there. Uh, but pretty exciting stuff. Let me turn it back over to you, Rudy, and uh, you can give people the details behind it. Okay, yeah, thanks a lot, Keith. So um, I will just do a, a briefly, uh, just talk about Transmart 16.2, just a refresher. These are the uh, new features that uh, have come into the to the release at this point um a lot of uh, a lot of capabilities here there are a lot of uh contributors uh, this time to, uh, with with some very substantive pieces uh smart r uh some of the xnet integration uh, gwas enhancements high dome uh, omics uh, enhancements from uh, j and j uh so it's um it's been it's quite a, a solid release as well the, the testing has gone quite well a lot of Obviously, there's always a couple little things that, that crop up, but nothing major has surfaced, and so this has been going quite well. Uh, the Postgres version was released uh, over a month ago, two months ago now, and um, we uh, we continue to work on the Oracle version. The testing has been going ongoing. Uh, thanks so much to, to Rancho, uh, Claravate for for uh, uh, doing some of the, the testing here with us, and um, I'm sure others are also testing, so uh, please... If you have any interest, it's still it's, it's sitting out there. There's information on the uh, on the wiki on how to actually get in and, and test it, uh, and um, you know we're getting close to, to finalizing the Oracle release, uh, and um, you know so far things are looking looking pretty good. So that that continues, and we will get that out hopefully within the next I don't know week or two um, as we finish that up. Uh, as Keith said, now we're turning our attention to Transmart. We're calling 2017. Uh, this will be the integration of the 17.1 um, Pro uh, project that has uh, several very interesting features, including uh, cross-study, um, extended cross-studies analysis, um, uh, longitudinal uh, data uh, introduced into the system, uh, some, some improved integrations with I2B2, and uh, the scalable genomics uh, enhancements that Keith mentioned with uh, the Arvados platform. Um, these are going to be brought together with all the 16.2 uh, features uh, and merged together into a single new release, which we're calling 2017. Um, we expect it's going to take a couple of months to get through all of this, and so we're working through uh, the details. Um, the 17.1 Transmart Pro project really focused on the, the back end, the architectural uh, pieces of this, and there have been some requests that uh, we do a uh, a back-end only release without the UI to some of these new features that, that some 
that there had been, uh, there is uh, apparently some interest in that. And so the PMC will consider, you know, what the, the, the interest there is. And uh, we'll be having that discussion over the next couple of weeks and uh, try to decide if we'll do an interim release with just um, the back end piece before all the UI pieces are pulled together. But um, this will be, you know, an, an active project for the next couple of months. And uh, we will get this out uh, just as quickly as we can uh, going forward. So that's, um, you know, that, that's where we're moving with the uh, uh, the platform, uh, as Keith said, there are a number of marketing things coming up. BioIT World, again, we will have a, a very uh, a big presence there doing a number of things. And we're working on a Wednesday evening program again. Uh, we'll be announcing that shortly um, And uh, as we pull that together. And then uh, we've been advertising also uh, in our e-blasts um, that uh, the um, Meeting at Harvard, Uni at Harvard Medical School um, with the I2B2 group uh, has been scheduled. It's the 20, 20th and the 22nd of June. Uh, on the 21st, there'll be the usual uh, Harvard Medical School Precision Medicine all-day meeting. Uh, in these three days, uh, we did this last year, and they, they should be quite exciting this year, especially if the merger gets approved and we're, uh, we're working towards the, the future of the uh, combined organization. So lots more details of those coming uh, shortly. But um, again, all that's in the e-blast the e and also on the website. You can take a look at that. So now um, we're, I'm going to turn this over to Scott Wagers. Uh, Scott uh, is uh, from Biopsy Consulting, uh, Etrix, uh, and uh, a silver member uh, of the foundation and uh, came to us and said, you know, he'd like to, to pitch in and help kind of re revitalize the, the community committee. Uh, and so um, in uh, discussions, and he's set up a number of working groups that uh, have been talking about things to help uh, the foundation and help the community. And um, this is the first uh, of the of things that he's been working on. And so uh, I'd like to turn it over to Scott, who's going to walk us through a program here to um, talk about uh, you know, the Transmart platform and what the available resources are. Uh, Scott? Yep. Um, let me see. So my presenter now, Rudy? Not yet. Let's see. I will do that. Well, while you're doing that, I'll just go ahead and give the, the backstory or the context as, as to, yeah. like, like Rudy said, you know, the idea was to kind of um, do some more with the community. And, um, and so we got a series of um, different conference calls with a number of different people sort of went through the process of saying, what are some of the major challenges people face? And one of the things that came up consistently were things with the installation, as well as where it's in different support issues. But as we discussed it further, it became clear that a lot of these um, a lot of these resources are actually in existence. It probably was more of an issue of being able to know where they're at, to catalog them and, and to have an easy way to find them. So that was the idea behind um, doing this in the webinar. And the concept will be that we'll go through a list of um, these different aspect, aspects, as you see here. And after the, the webinar, we're going to take the recording and look at it and try to break it into small digestible pieces that can then go back on the website in addition to the entire webinar. As a beginning to understand what the resources are, and we can use this to kind of get a sense of what the gaps are and where there needs to be things filled in. So if people have ideas or comments or other things that, that are challenging, please comment here or comment uh, to Rudy and myself or whoever. Um, so, um, you know, here's here's the the order of what we're going to be doing today. Talk about the installation. Talk about um, which will be Peter Rice, and then how to get support from Ward Weister from the Hive, as well as training for the API. Uh, Tanya Kashinova from Rancho Biosciences will talk about the availability of content, and then she'll also talk about the review of ETL documentation. We'll have an overview of the res of foundation resources from Rudy. And then some standard use cases or where to find standard use cases that are available from Jan William. And then we'll end with available vendors from uh, Titania Kilklova from Clarivate Analytics. So with that, I will switch over to Peter, if that's okay for you, Peter, uh, to make you the presenter. 
and you can start. Are you there, Peter? Yeah. Okay, I hear you now. Excellent. Do you see my screen? Yep. We do. Go ahead. Okay, so just a, a quick overview of the, the installation script that we have. This is something that was there for 16.1. Uh, we've tested it on a few additional systems and put some uh, some fixes in to catch a couple of minor issues. So the idea of this is that you can just set up a, a VM um, or an empty Ubuntu installation and install Transmart in a few simple steps. So we have a, a one-step install script, which you'll find on the website. The, uh, the release announcement on the wiki points to it. Peter, it's, it's a bit small, so I don't know if you can make it to the presenter mode or yeah. increase the size of it. Thanks. And just while he's doing that, if anybody has any questions, just raise your hand on the webinar and then we can unmute you and have you make the questions. Yeah. Go ahead. How's, how's that now? Yeah, that's better. Okay, lovely. So this, will, this basically is a script that you install, you set it up and run it. It takes uh, five to 10 minutes to run through and it should just run through and install everything. We've occasionally seen minor issues depending on the system we're working on. So I might describe a couple of the gotchas you, you could run into. Uh, so it's an installation of Transmart 16.2 for Postgres. The idea is that if you just want to set up a quick system and, and test, Postgres is the system to go for. It uses a VM or just an empty um, Ubuntu system. It supports Ubuntu 14. There are some dependencies in the installation, so we can't out of the box support 14 and 16. So at the moment, we're supporting 14. You set up your system, you create an admin user called Transmart that has uh, pseudo privileges, and then you download the installation script and just run. That's the plan. The script then downloads uh, Transmart and a couple of other packages besides, sets up the Postgres database for you, configures Transmart, starts up Transmart, and checks that everything has worked for you. A couple of things you have to install first because you're using them to download the install script. So it checks that you have curl to fetch from the uh, library server. It checks that you have unzip to unzip the scripts that you picked up. And then you simply pick up the, uh, the scripts from the server. These instructions are all on the wiki. You can just cut and paste them. Then you unzip into the scripts folder. Just rename it scripts so it's shorter to type and doesn't have the release number in it. And then you just run the script and save a copy of the any messages to install.log, which can be quite verbose. If successful, Transmart is installed and it tells you it's OK. If it doesn't work, there's some message at the end of the log file. You need to correct it or ask us for help and we'll correct it. And if you do need to run again, mostly you can just delete the Transmart directory, which deletes all the Transmart um, things that it's picked up, Transmart, Transmart data, and so on. Um, everything else that is installed in Ubuntu is already there, so that part runs quickly, and just run again. Uh, one that we found was that some Ubuntu installations have a different protection on their log directory, so it would run to the end and then fail to find the Transmart log file. So that was a bit of a nuisance running it again, but that's now fixed. It now uses privileges to check that the log file exists. When you've done that, you can then in start installing some data sets. So by default, it installs one data set for you that you can use for practice. Um, and if you just run this script, it will do that. You can also you'll see instructions on the wiki. You can edit the list of data sets and automatically load a few other ones. And later on, we'll hear how to download data sets. You'll have all of those available to you with this installation. In future, um, I think for the next release, we should try to support Ubuntu 16. That will need some rejigging of a lot of the dependencies. It would be good to support some of the other Linux systems. So I use Fedora for development, and it would be good to, to set one up that uses DNF to do the installs instead of apt-get. We did have one user who wanted to work on Red Hat um, using yum to do the installations, but they had some issues internally and couldn't download most of the dependencies. So we 
paused that for now. And for Oracle users, we could probably set something up where you just point to where you have Oracle installed internally, and it could set up a Transmart database for you. Uh, most of the instructions would be the same as for Postgres. If anyone is interested in those, let us know, and we can work with you to set up the scripts. Basically, we take a copy of the scripts and update the instructions for the system you're working on, use different installs, different names for dependencies if needed. And it should be fairly quick to set something up for you and give you a few iterations through to make sure that we've caught everything. I think that was the last one. Yeah. So barring any burning questions, we'll just move right on to Ward. I'll make you the presenter, Ward, and you can move on to your presentation about how to get support. So if your installation doesn't work well and <laughs> training for the API. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. And uh, thank you, Peter. Um, so I'll also enlarge my screen here. You're seeing my screen fine? Yep, looks great. Great, great. Okay, um, yeah, so I'll help you to to two different parts uh, that were um, on my plate here. So you, first of all, you heard uh, Peter Rice at some point to say, uh, if, uh, if it doesn't work, uh, we can help you with that. So I will try to uh, point you to how you can reach us as a community um, helping each other. Uh, there are multiple ways to do that. And secondly, I'd like to give a small introduction into a training that will be held la later this year um, on the REST API for Transmart, how you can build stuff on top of Transmart. So not just the current user interface, but basically an ecosystem of all kinds of apps you can build on top. Um, so let's start with the first one, how to get help on Transmart. Actually, to start, it's very easy. You go to the wiki.transmart foundation. Um, the wiki uh, has pointers to everything you might need, but just it, it might be a little bit overwhelming if you start um, if you start digging there yourself. So let us um, get out of the slides and just go to the wiki directly. So this is where you would end up if you just type wiki.transmartfoundation.org. And you will see that there is a lot of information here. And I think maybe uh, Rudy will dive deeper into the foundation resources. Something I want to point out is the first link on the left here that you will see. So it's the getting support option. And the getting support page has um, uh, a nice list of everything you would need to get someone in the community to help each other. We're an open source community. There's a lot of volunteers who are uh, went through the same problems that you might have, so we're happy to help. So first of all, there is a community support chat room. And it's a very simple thing. So the um, Transmart Foundation is sponsoring a HipChat room, um, a HipChat server for um, everyone in the Transmart community to get in contact. Uh, and all you need to do is you click here, you don't even need to make an account. You can just say, uh, hey, I'm uh, uh, someone who needs help. And I can join the room. And it will directly open the chat application, uh, which is called HipChat, which might take longer. Uh, okay, and then you see the instructions here. All you need to do first is type add help. So uh, please help me and add help oh no add help so that's what you do and you see that um some people will get messages here so that's you see actually i'm getting a message right now here so that's myself ward and peter are currently uh volunteer staff here um who try to either help you directly or point you to someone else who might be able to help you um, we're definitely looking for other people to join us here. Um, everyone is able to make an HipChat account. We're just the first people that uh, get notified and then we try to um, help you through the steps or I can connect you to any of our developers or other people in the community who might know how to help. So that's a really easy and direct one uh, way to get into contact. Um, I would definitely encourage you to create a real HipChat account. So this is just a temporary HipChat account that you do. But if you create a real one, you can stay into contact with all uh, other people in the community. And it's free and it's really useful. Um, then there's the community support email list. So many people might already know this. It's called Transmart Discuss. It is a Google group. You can um, go here directly on the website. And you see that a lot of people post questions here. And there's a lot of different people 
um, from the Hive, from Clarivate, from uh, the Transfer Foundation, etc., who try to answer all of your questions here. You can also just email to this. You can come become a member, um, so you can um, get uh, subscriptions to all the questions that are being asked, and so you can also help other people. So that's a really good one. And then uh, this is um, mainly to get in contact with the community. If you really have a Transmart uh, Foundation uh, question, you can reach them at uh, support at transmartfoundation.org. And they're also to, uh, here to help you uh, create an account for the wiki or create an account for the Jira for the issue tracker. And finally, there's a, a, a long list of uh, foundation resources, including trainings that uh, might get you prepared. Um, for more stuff in, in the later front. Um, so then there's also, uh, I just mentioned the Jira. So if you have an issue that you, a bug that you found with Transmart, there's a sub page of this page that tells you how to get an account for the Jira, where we collect all these issues and these bugs and people might pick them up and might fix them. Peter is doing a lot of that. Um, and then there's some suggestions here on how you uh, create a good bug report. Um, so please, please follow this and we'd love your feedback there. So that's it on the support side. And then um, I'd like to quickly tell you about the Transmart REST API. So you might all be familiar with the regular user interface from Transmart, but there's also a user interface, but then not for users, but for computers. And this is really useful to build any kind of apps on top of Transmart. It's called an REST API. So the API stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, some things that have already been built on top of this REST API is an R interface, which is an R package that you can use directly in R to get the data from Transmart. It still respects all authentication that you have on the, on the system. So you can give people access to different studies. Um, and it's really useful to get the data straight into R. Um, I personally built an Android client at some point. We're working on a new user interface for Transmart on top of the REST API. So that's really cool stuff. And, and, and basically, the sky is the limit. You can build any app on top integrations with other systems. And there's a training coming later this year in May. Um, and there's a Transmart Foundation website. Uh, I'm sure Rudy will point this out, but where there's an overview of all the trainings that Transmart Foundation gives. Um, and then a little pointer into um, the, the REST um, the rest API. So as you might know, Transmart used to um, uh, recently, like the 16.2 uh, and, and 16.1 versions, um, the data model is basically limited to patients, concepts, and observations. And um, this is really useful to model a lot of things, there were some issues with cross-study concepts and time series and samples. And as Rudy mentioned, that's uh, being solved in the 17.1 project. So in this back end, we have um, a great data model, which will allow you to um, model all kinds of time series and um, samples and many other things with modifiers. And also um, grouped patient visits, like a baseline visit or a week one visit. Um, so this is basically the new data model and also how it compares to I2B2. So I'm very much looking forward to this combination between I2B2 and Transmart here. And we used to have a uh, version one of REST API, which supports this um, model that Transmart currently has. But in the upcoming release, the 2017 release, um, we'll have many more dimensions. So there's a new user, in, uh, a new REST API version called version two, which will be supported from the uh, 2017 version onwards. Um, and the nice thing is that also that we have a really interactive open API documentation of this API. And you can see that here. I'll scroll to the bottom where you see the version two of the REST API. You see that there are many different calls. You can ask for all the studies, for all the observations in the database, all the patients. And um, you can ask for all of them, but there's also a long list of constraints that you can use to limit all the observations for patients that you're getting back. So for example, there's a study name constraint where you can limit all the observations that you get back only to a specific study or only to a specific concept or a specific concept for everyone having a, a heart rate larger than a specific value. So this is really useful and flexible. There's a training coming up in May. So uh, please, uh, please attend and, uh, and build something on top of Transmart. So Scott, I'll hand it back to you here. Okay, great. Thanks, Ward. 
Um, that was very useful. Uh, next, we have Tatanya Kashanova from Rancho Biosciences, and I'll give you the present, make you the presenter. And she's going to talk about um, availability of content and the review of the ETL documentation. Can you hear me? Yep, we hear you. Wonderful. Um, let yeah, me start at this slide. Okay. So um, thank you so much. I think um, uh, the meeting is really useful. So we covered the installation, we covered the help. So I wanted to focus on a um, couple of things um, and that is ETL and content because you obviously need to populate your newly installed and troubleshot Transmart. And uh, for that, you need some sample data as well as the procedures that can um, help you load the data. Last time we talked, uh, it came to everyone's attack. We have uh, maybe it's time to review things because it's been a couple of releases since the last time we updated the pages for the content. So this is what I've done. Um, so the main reason for this survey was to generate an understanding of what content is available and what is still missing. And if, and this is really important, our ETL procedures match the content that we have. And so my uh, aspiration was to uh, provide a relatively complete uh, landscape of what is available, and then uh, we can work as a community to fill up the, uh, the gaps uh, quite quickly. Um, so th this is by no means a set in stone presentation. I expect it to be changed and, and things. So first of all, where do you find stuff? So if you go to transmartfoundation.org and go into the tab called platform, over here you will have um, in the menu um, uh, a tab called documentation. You click on that. In there you will have some links, but the one that you need would be curating and loading data, this one. Then you click on that and that brings you to this next page where it says uh, curating and loading data ETL. Over here, you can find a list of things that are available in this very uh, simple table. Okay, so um, when I was looking for information, um, trying to survey it, a couple of things clicked, uh, clicked came to mind after this. So it takes just four clicks to get to the data and content page. Um, in my opinion, and I know we have some people experienced in marketing, uh, it may be just a taxi too long. Um, and so we were wondering if that could be fixed. For example, you can imagine pulling up this page into the main menu over here under the platform. So at least it will be two clicks, okay. Um, so I also saw that the page itself, the curating and loading data detail can benefit from several sentences describing why data needs to be curated. And of course, on this call, we have people who've been, you know, living with Transmart for a while, but for new members, for people who are just checking it out, um, it might not be that obvious, why, why do we need curation? So it's basically goes installation and then here, curating and loading. And so some people may say, you know, what is curation? Why am I doing this? So I think it will be good um, to have just a little, a really short and sweet intro explaining why it needs to, to happen. Um, and again, this is based on my customer uh, feedback as well. So we often go into explanations about Transmart and then people for some reason think that there is a automatic button and uh, there is none, so they need to understand what it means, and but also not be intimidated by the process. So it, it has to be um, a balanced um, approach. Um, I felt that it would be better if we separate the content on that page into two categories, um, and actually I, I now think maybe three. Um, so the actual data, the content, and the procedures themselves, the ETL scripts, as well as tools. And over there, we can have links to some converters, um, dictionaries, perhaps, and the API as well. So uh, that way, people can clearly see what's where. And of course, everything has to be hyperlinked. Um, but right now, it's just one big roll of things. And I don't think um, it, it jumps at me immediately where to click, you know, where for, for what. 
So just a little bit more organization, I think, will go a long way. Okay, and then I actually uh, started checking the links. Um, and here is the result. And of course, you guys will have all this uh, information as, as slides. Uh, but here is what um, I, I, I thought. So Curated Data Repository link has tons and tons of data. It's a really big page. I do think we can organize it a little bit better. Um, supported data types um, uh, has no information in it. It seems to be a page that has been moved from some other um, version of website and hasn't been updated for a while. So I think this one needs to be worked on. And again, uh, volunteers probably will be needed for that. So Transmart ETL guide uh, has a lot of data, but it needs major updates. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it on the next slide. Um, ETRIC standard starter pack. For some reason, when I clicked on it, uh, it led me to the actual Transmart instance. And I don't know if that was the intention. I don't think so, uh, but I could be wrong. So maybe someone needs to double check this particular one. Um, the ICE guide um, leads to, you know, click on that and you get into a PDF document, which is fine. It does need an update because the this version of manual talks about uh, version 1.2 and we're already on 16.2, so it's um, a little bit outdated. The uh, TM data loader is, is a really great resource. It has tons of information. It's well supported and has a live wiki, its own wiki, which is linked, um, has a separate link here. So that was very good and useful. Um, so then there's um, this link. It's called Tutorial How to Load the Cell Line Use uh, Case Data Set with Transmart Batch. Um, aside from, uh, from a Naming, that's a really, really good page. It's well written. Um, it has relevant links. It explains stuff really well. So I really liked it. So these two guys, you know, are highlighted in green. I don't think we need to do much there. Maybe rename this guy somehow differently. Um, because what you really have is an explanation of how to use Transmart Batch and uh, and then the use case. So that again, very useful, but I would rename it. So then the converter, um, it, it is very extensive and useful. Uh, seems to be a little bit out of place. Again, I think if we reorganize this particular page, it will look much better. Um, loading VCF with Transmart data. Useful link, good information. Seems a little bit out of date, but maybe um, I'm wrong. Uh, but it seems to be like a child, this should be a child page to one of the previous ones. So it's again, um, slightly misplaced in my opinion. And then this guy, uh, guide as well, very useful. It does need to have a little bit more details, but um, for example, how to log in and where do you actually execute those commands for those of us who are not developers, it will be a little baffling, like it actually starts, type it here, type it there. Uh, so, and and my, my first question would be type where really? Um, and so, and that's again, because I'm not a developer and I think a lot of people are not, um, but it, overall also useful, also needs to be somehow folded into the um, uh, ETL procedures, I believe. Um, so for the ETL guides themselves, so at the moment, um, it looks to me like we have four major procedures, the original cattle, ICE, TM data loader, and uh, Transmart batch loader. I would love to see a front page for ETL guides looking kind of like this. So just the name of the script, where you can locate the code and documentation, the supported versions, supported data types, um, who is the contributor, and the contact information. And then by clicking on links, you get to learn um, about these loaders, and you should also be able to um, access the uh, tutorials, just like on the previous page. So it's a matter of organization rather than redoing the content, in my opinion. And again, guys, if you have any comments, please let me know. I I don't want to do this in uh, in isolation. That's my vision of it. But I know that on the call, we have people who are very, very skilled at marketing and promoting content. So um, it would be very useful to hear your thoughts on that. So this is the review of what we have so far. Like, um, the, these are the loaders. These are the names. Um, 
for the pages where you can find them. So you can see they're not quite standardized. Um, and then here um, I attempted to um, assess the pages themselves. Um, and this is what I got. Um, and here again, there is a tutorial, but there is not like a manual. I don't think it's a problem. It's essentially is a tutorial. Um, I'm sorry, manual, but um, it, you know, um, maybe can be uh, organized slightly different. So some of the things like for the kettle, for example, there are things that are, you know, we definitely need to fix them if you if we want to keep those uh, manuals there. For example, if you go into the kettle menu over here, you will, you know, keep reading through it in section 5.5 where you're kind of like, okay, I like it, let me get the script. The link to the script is missing. So this thing is just a text in the manual. And so that probably needs to be updated. Okay, and here is just a summary of what I was just saying. And I also think the point that I was um, I was going to make today was also that we desperately need more tools. And one of the tools that I personally would love to see uh, available is some kind of a validator. That is when you curate the study and you are just, you know, a step away from loading it, you do need a validator to make sure everything will go well. And um, I know that people have them, so um, it would be good if somebody can share. That applies also to Orange as well. Okay. Um, with regards to content, do you guys have any questions on ETL guides or any comments so far? Hello? That looks good, Tanya. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see any questions. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm okay to, <laughs> to people or not. Okay, so um, for the content, same idea. And, uh, and Rudy, you know, you and I discussed this before. I know that, for example, I prepared a sample of how Cecilia data set could be presented in a more concise way than it is presented right now on the website. It is, it is represented quite well. But the way the page looks is just a little unwieldy. Um, and so I saw that, for example, a consolidation similar to what I, I'm showing here would be good. And we kind of have that structure, but it's more spread out and inconsistent between the data types. So I, uh, again, attempted to assess what we have and what is represented by what data set. So here is the uh, here are the data types that I could come up with. So clinical, which I define as phenotype data for humans. So for example, if you're talking about cell lines, that's not really a clinical phenotype, but it's a matter of semantics. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so the gene expression from microarray, gene expression from RNA seq, variant data of different kinds, time series data, GWAS and more exotic types. And here I tried to pull in the uh, data sets that we have for each data type. So this is what I came up with. I'm not sure that I could locate the RBM data set, um, but it's all right. Um, uh, the majority of the data types we do have represented. Now, a word of caution, some of the data sets are represented by test sets donated by Sanofi, which is great, but having real real life examples will also be good. So here I uh, tried to write it here. So the two types, you know, data types that are predictably covered really well are, of course, clinical and gene expression. So we have plenty of there. I do think we may, you know, think about reworking the lists a little bit maybe by disease but again it's it's done pretty well at, at the moment so i have no um, major issues with these two the rest of it is a little bit questionable so for example gwas data right now the link to the actual data is missing from the website so it needs to be reinstated and I was trying to think about what I would like to see um, as a front page. Like, remember, there is this uh, supported data types page that is currently missing content. So I was thinking that we could provide, again, something very, very simple and concise, a small table kind of like this. Um, data types from previous uh, table represented by in the data set, which should be hyperlinked, right? Um, compatible ETL, 
also hyperlinked, okay? And then the compatible uh, Transmart version. So this way, when people go in here and they think, oh, okay, I need to learn how to deal with uh, time series data, um, they click on the respective geo data sets and they click on ICE and they are taken to the pages where these two things are located. And then they can also quickly see which version of Transmart um, is compatible with this particular data set and with what um, in, in the ETL. And then they, they can go ahead and start testing it. So, so Tanya, we are running a little bit short on time. I know. So that's all, that's all I have. And uh, uh, you can take away the um, ball from me, whatever. But the, these are the conclusions that I sort of reached. And you guys are more than welcome to add to that. Okay, great. Uh, we do have a question, but I'm going to, in the interest of time, uh, delay that to the end, I think, from Titania. So if you can hold on to that question, um, we'll, um, let me go to uh, Rudy. Uh, so Rudy will, can present a little overview of foundation resources. I don't see you on the computer. There, there you go, Rudy. You're doing it I just threw it myself. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find you on the list. Yeah. Okay, I'll try to, to do this quickly. Um, talk about the Transmart uh, resources and uh, some comments about um, what Tanya was just talking about. So I'm going to just hit, you know, quickly wiki pages, our YouTube channel, and some of the website pieces. Um, our wiki pages, uh, Ward already uh, talked about this a bit. I was just going to highlight that, you know, we, we try to keep these up to date. There's, um, for example, information on the current release. Uh, some of the, the project planning, you know, and, and uh, development plans uh, and all the way through some detailed descriptions of what's in the release and linking back to a lot of our recordings and things. So the wiki is a, a treasure of information and you really should uh, take a look at that as you're looking for more details. Uh, and that there, there are links uh, as appropriate on the website, on, on the main website that go into the wiki. Um, and so we're trying not to duplicate on the website what's in the wiki. And so we're trying to, to keep all those uh, together. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but we do maintain a YouTube channel for Transmart. All the recordings that you see linked on our website actually get posted to YouTube. And I try to keep the YouTube um, uh, playlists organized. Uh, you see here the, the playlist that we have. And I, I try to set them up logically, like for each annual meeting for our community webinars, uh, our training program, et cetera. Uh, we, right now we have about 124 subscribers and there've been over 16,000 views uh, and it dates all the way back to 2013. So I've tried to keep everything out here uh, as we do every, all the recordings and all. Uh, if you're comfortable with YouTube, you can certainly navigate it this way, but all of these are also linked back in a logical form uh, to the website. But if you go into one of the playlists here, for example, like here's all of the presentations from uh, the 2016 uh, annual meeting in San Diego, and they're all out here you know, individually organized, and you can pick and choose which ones you want to watch. Uh, so um, please use the YouTube channel. It, uh, it's got you know tons and tons of data. Uh, our website, um, you know, uh, Satanya, so I love the, your your comments back about what's out here, and uh, you know, I invite anyone who has comments and questions or suggestions to to come back. And, and give them to us. We, we really want to keep this up to date. We want to make it useful for everyone. And as I get comments back and suggestions, it really does help uh, tremendously. Uh, we try to organize the front page to have, you know, the key uh, news bits, you know, in the middle there, uh, special announcements off to the to the right hand column. Uh, Keith does keep us a, a give a column that we can uh, use there. And, you know, the latest um, e-blast, the latest the next training class, all that uh, tends to be uh, listed out here. Um, we do have news. I post news on here regularly and the news is available. It's a scrolling set of news features and uh, these you know, stay there and give you links to the different pieces. So, for example, you know, the, the merger announcement from the, the letter of intent, uh, we do keep a list of our upcoming events and you can look at them either as a nice list or uh, you may not know, but there's a, a nice also calendar view that you can look at and see what events are upcoming. Uh, when you click on these, you go to the event itself, and within that, you can usually register and you know, do whatever you need. So, you know, you can keep track of what's coming up uh, on the website. Uh, we do maintain for past events, you know, a, a review page. 
Uh, so, for example, the 2016 annual meeting, all of the, the links are here for the talks, the PowerPoints, uh, the posters, you know, the, everything is here. You can go back and review it all. Uh, this is 2015. You can go to 2014. Um, you know, uh, this is the BioIT World Conference. And again, we try to do kind of a summary of the event and have all the key links uh, laid out here on the web page. Uh, so, you know, if you, there's something that you've heard about, you know, you can certainly go out and see it here. These news blasts, you get these once a month to announce this meeting. Uh, all of these are captured here on the, on the news, on the news blasts. Uh, and, um, you know, the actual e-blast is, is here as well. So, again, if you, you've lost the link or you want to get some more information about something, you can generally go here and find it. Uh, and these all tend to be, uh, we try to make them live links. All of these community meetings are captured and uh, the recordings and the slide decks are available within a day. Uh, and so, you know, you can see last month's meeting are here and uh, this this recordings will also be here uh, in a, you know, if not later today, certainly tomorrow. Um, as Ward mentioned, we have an extensive training program, at least one training class a month. Uh, and you can see the recording of the previous training programs or register here. Uh, these go throughout the entire year. Uh, this year, we also, uh, Etrix is having a uh, conference in Barcelona uh, in May, and we will have a couple of training classes there. Uh, we're also looking at having a couple of training classes at BioIT World. And so, you know, actually having uh, quite a few this year. Uh, these training classes are all contributed by Rancho Bioscience, by Clarivate Analytics, and The Hive. Uh, and, um, the uh, you know, we've, we've gotten a lot of good feedback on these training classes. And Finally, you know, we try to keep track of, you know, how do you get involved with the foundation? And so, again, on the website, you know, membership, um, using the platform, training classes, you know, the community uh, and vendors in our marketplace, which we'll hear about next. You know, all of these are out there uh, on the, the website and, um, you know, explore it and please give me feedback. I'm, I'm absolutely happy to, to rethink things to, you know. Links break for reasons I don't understand, and you know we are constantly trying to keep this up to date and, and working ahead. Um, if the merger, you know, when, when the merger is approved, we're going to have some changes to the website. There'll be some updates and things, but uh, we will keep, you know, everything that's out there will stay there, and we'll just try to keep it and make it more and more useful for you. So it's fast, I'm just, I know, but um, you know, you can review all these materials uh, later. Scott. Okay. Yep. I'll just flip over to Jan William to to. Go over some one of the standard use cases that are out there. So, Yen William, um, I just made you presenter. Yeah, can you see, uh, see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. So, I think I still got a few seconds uh, to present a couple of use cases from the trade uh, perspective. So, I'll try to do this fast. Um, so, as Many of you know, but maybe not all of you, is uh, that trade really tries to be the one-stop shop for the translational researcher. And so we are not only doing a data integration centered around Transmart, but we also do have uh, basically all the tools to support this workflow that you see here. And this is also reflected in the trade website. So it's really a, a suite of tools. Just to provide you a, a bit of context to the use cases that I will, will show you. So trade, you can really, we try to be the same thing as MS offices for your off desktop work. So uh, we have a suite of integrated tools, but yeah, when you look at the bottom, Transmart is really the centerpiece. Uh, uh, it plays a pivotal role, uh, bringing together the, the clinical data acquisition, the imaging data acquisition, and the molecular profiling uh, data acquisition. So we, all the processed final data is available in Transmart in, in our use cases. And, but we also allow to trace back to the original raw data in the pipelines. So that's the way we approach the use cases. So uh, one use case that, uh, that I want to share with you is the cell line use case already mentioned in one of the previous talks. And it's also available from the Transmart Foundation website. And it's a bit silly thing we did there, but um, yeah, what you, usually uh, meet as a limitation is legal restrictions in uh, getting access to the data. So the data in an, a normal uh, transmart use case uh, is pretty sparse, uh, certainly when it's an, a public use case. But what we did here is basically um, created data with cell lines and did that across all the mo molecular profiling domains. So um, 
And in that way, we could uh, basically test and facilitate uh, easy uploading of the data. So we, and and also um, it allows you to um, to have a consistent data set to um, to test and train uh, viewing and querying of the of the data. Um, and so it's publicly available. It's a consistent data set um, and very useful to um, for all training and testing purposes uh, around uh, Transmart. Um, another use case um, that we did was was very um, uh, educational for us. So we went to a, an original paper of uh, of the Gerrit Meyer uh, Meyer group. So Gerrit is the PI of uh, of trade, and we downloaded the original uh, raw data and tried to load that in Transmart. And um, uh, now it took us quite some effort, but at the end of the of today, we were able to do this. So we had, and now we have across molecular profiling domains that were described in this paper. We do have the data loaded in Transmart. And um, now the first thing we could do with this is reproduce the original published data. But uh, now in practice, it's also very useful for the group itself. So because we can uh, perform additional analyses on, the, uh, on this uh, original data. So, but also this data um, is available on request. So uh, you can get, uh, request an account and uh, of the Trade Transmart instance and get access to this data. So it can be very, uh, very useful to um, to see what's possible with Transmart for novice users. Huh? Um, yeah, I don't know how, how I'm doing the time, but so one more one more use case that I wanted to mention because it's a bit out of the normal. Uh, but it also shows what you can do with Transmart. So we also have uh, a use case in colon cancer where we um, load, loaded uh, basically a link to tissue microarray data. So this, these are scans of, of tissues which are punched on, uh, on, yeah, on these large gels. And we scan them, load them in an, uh, in an imaging system that we call TAPAS. And this is linked back to, this is linked into Transmart. And so here we do have a data set that, that's consistent um, across a number of pipelines. So we do have the clinical data that's coming from Upper Clinica, loaded from the Upper Clinica link. We do have these scans. We do have the annotations of these scans, which are in a system called Phenotype Database. And we also do have the links back to the original samples or the metadata of the samples. And these samples are stored then in a biobank uh, catalog. So um, th this shows that Transmart is very powerful to uh, to bridge all these data pipelines, and uh, also this is a use case a case we can describe further and uh, and put on the website. Huh? So yeah, basically what I want to do is just give a flavor of a couple of use cases from our practice uh, that can be useful uh, to, you know, for uh, educational purposes. Huh? Uh, I think that's all in view of the the, the time. No, that's great because we're, we're a little bit over time. So if those of you can stay, please stay. Um, we're now going to switch over to, uh, to Tonya Kelkova from uh, uh, Clarivate. And uh, so I'll make you the presenter. And she's going to tell us about available vendors of the, of the vendor site. Okay, we see your screen. We don't hear you. Are you there, Tanya?
Hello? It looks like she might be having trouble getting in. Yeah, she she was in earlier. Um, it's not connected to audio. I do see a microphone here now. Yeah. Hi, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, there yes, you go. Yes. Okay, nice. Uh, hello, this is Tatiana from Clarovate, and I would like to share some ideas uh, regarding the improvement of the vendor directory page. So, first of all, as an introduction, I would like to mention that Transmart Foundation is an open community, and everyone uh, can become and is really welcome uh, to become a vendor and contribute to the development and use of the Transmart platform. So, the Vendor directory page uh, can be easily accessed uh, from the main page of the Transmart Foundation. Can you see my screen? Yes, we see your desktop. Okay, sorry. And now? Yes. Yep, that's that. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so uh, the vendor directory page can be easily accessed from the main page of Transmart Foundation. Uh, using the vendor directory link under the marketplace tag. So this link will lead you to the vendor directory page with the uh, table of vendors, which is the list of organizations who offer services to support the Transmart community. So uh, regarding the format of the table itself, uh, we can see that there is a possibility uh, to add a filter option, maybe to uh, which will be really useful uh, to filter the list of vendors by the name of the type or, or the type of services that they are provided. Also, the, um, there is a possibility to add more granularity to the type of services themselves here. And uh, uh, regarding the description of the services, you can see that uh, different vendors, uh, the description for different vendors are really different in the uh, volume of, of provided information in the structure, and some of them contain the uh, unclickable and interactive links. So there is an option uh, to make it more, uh, to unify these uh, descriptions, to make them more short and structured. <clears throat> Maybe also to add the uh, interactive links to uh, give the opportunity to the vendor to provide the details, to share the details that they wanted to provide to us to share. Okay, uh, so there is the other option to add additional fields, like the organization representative, uh, with the contact details uh, for the specific person that you can reach for consultation uh, on the type of services that are provided by this vendor. So this like, uh, optional variant, <laughs> optional idea. So uh, also I would like to mention that uh, the information that is presented in this table maybe needs some update. And uh, let me uh, give you an example that, for example, the, the Digitalica Health vendor name is mentioned twice in this table. When you click to the uh, website link, it leads you to the as you can see, it leads you to the same website. Uh, but the information that is provided regarding the types of services and the description uh, differ for this, for the same vendor. Huh. Well, the same goes to uh, Clarivate Analytics. The link that is provided to the site is uh, the updated one, but the name of the vendor should be updated. So, mm -hmm. um, there are the main points, there's other main points that I wanted to cover and uh, uh, we're open for discussion and you're really welcome. I encourage you to share any ideas that you will have or have now regarding the uh, improvements of this vendor page. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you all. I think um, the, it was a very good series of presentations. I apologize we ran over. Um, 
I think unless somebody has a burning question, I think we'll take the questions offline. I don't know what you think, Rudy, um, since we're 10 minutes over. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fair. I mean, if anybody does have a burning question you'd like to ask right now, uh, you can raise your hand or you can type it into the question window, but otherwise we will wrap up. I'd like to say thank you to, to the presenters and to Scott. Um, I think that, you know, getting getting feedback, getting suggestions, you know, is something that uh, is, is always welcome. And um, even more welcome would be your help in uh, trying to address some of the, the issues that are brought up here. So I think, um, you know, we have a real opportunity to, to make all of this better. And, um, you know, we, we may be facing a growing community uh, even more dramatically than we have. And so uh, it's, it's really a good time for us to, to refocus on, you know, getting all these resources uh, cleaned up, updated, and, um, you know, made more available. Thanks so much, Scott. That was really great. Oh, you're welcome. I think it's a, it's a testimonial to the, to the strength of the community and the, the, the richness of, of resources that are out there. So, yep. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. We'll wrap this up. Um, again, recording will be available hopefully later today. Uh, thank you all. Thank you.